test, test. Test, 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 test. I'm hearing myself now, I think. Hello? Yep. Hello? All right, Tom, if you'd like to try. I, c I can't hear it going through there. Is it going through there okay? Yep. Cool. Okay, perfect. All right, and then Deborah. I do hear that, yep. All right, you yep, you're good to go. I hear trying. Yeah, it's very quiet, but it's there. There you go, yep. Oh, um, will you check the second microphone? Testing. If no, Marjorie. Nope, don't quite hear it. Is that better? Testing. Dad, you have to hold it pretty close. Oh, yep, you're there. I think it's just quiet. Okay. Yep. All right. This is my opportunity to say that we're going to start in just a second. So if you haven't grabbed a drink or if you just want to sum up at the bar or if you just want to take a breath, <laughs> now's the time. And we'll just get going in just a moment here. We'll start with an introduction from our wonderful president and CEO. I'll introduce myself and then we'll let the artist over here take it away. Great. I don't see anyone running. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, is everybody up here comfortable taking their mask off when they're speaking? Okay. Thanks for the request. Yep. Uh, ventilation system is very good here, too. Uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, it's very really well rated, so. Um, and then the audience, it is recommended for a mask regardless of vaccination status, but it is recommended. So if you so choose to keep your mask off, that is up to you. All right, any last requests before we get going? Awesome. All right, Mal, I'll let you take it on. Thank you very much, Riley. Can we have a round of applause for Riley who coordinated this event tonight? That wasn't your official uh, introduction, by the way. <laughs> Thank you all, by the way, for coming to the Marn Art and Culture Hub. Thank you all very, very much for participating tonight and for being part of this fantastic show. And not to make anybody nervous, but I was just uh, high-fiving Adam over here who told me that we're actually broadcasting live on Facebook right now as well. So, so again, uh, the metaverse is part of this as well. So thank you so very, very much. Um, I wanted to just take a quick moment before we get started here officially and let you know that um, and we'll work through all those. Uh, let's see, Riley now is going to redirect one of the speakers there, hopefully... Uh, It'll help everybody hear everything. I will ask you, feel free to talk fully, firmly, right into that microphone. Sometimes it starts to slide away. So don't, don't be bashful with this. So as Riley mentioned, my name is Mal Montoya. I am the president and CEO of the Milwaukee Artists Resource Network. This is our home. This is the Marn Art and Culture Hub. So thank you all for being here. But we also know that, as our location uh, would indicate, here in the Third Ward, this is actually a uh, historic homeland. And I felt that it was best just to make, take a couple of quick seconds and, and just acknowledge that the hub is located, of course, here in the Third Ward, the traditional Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk, Menominee homeland where people of Wisconsin sovereign Anishinaabe, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Oneida, and Mohican nations remain present. That's very important for us because we do feel that they too should be acknowledged. After all, we are uh, the current uh, residents, but certainly there will be those that come after us as well. I would also like to just remind everybody, um, 
if you're not a member, <coughs> I would ask you to strongly consider it. Membership drives a lot of the programming, for example, what we're doing here tonight. So even if you aren't an artist, if you are an artist, it's a very nominal fee, student uh, memberships uh, that are as low as $40 a year can, can be had here. So definitely look into that. If you have any questions, please let us know. Any of the staff will help answer any questions that you might have in terms of some of the benefits that you get as being a member here. Um, I'd also like to take um, a quick moment to acknowledge Ryan, who is manning the cafe in the back. We got some of the best coffee, some of the best teas. There's some actually some great wine, some great beers. Um, I would highly recommend that you go and introduce yourself to Ryan as well. I'd like to thank right next to him is Nicole Shaver, our operations director. Hi, Nicole. Couldn't be done without her as well. And of course, Adam White, who is behind us right here, uh, working very, very hard as well. And I'll let you introduce, is there anybody besides Meredith here on the service staff side? Um, no, just Emma. Emma is our lovely Myad service learner who's been helping us out. Uh, last year, or last semester, we had Meredith, so that's okay, yeah. See what these masks do? Okay, so thank you so much. Very, and by the way, the marketplace, don't forget, that marketplace is all local artists. Some of you may be in there now. Get in there and take a good look and support the local economy here. Okay, so without any further ado, let me please uh, introduce to you all our welcome Riley Nemock, our gallery director. Thank you, Riley. Thank you so much, Mel. Hello, welcome once again. Um, yes, I am the gallery director here. I'm also the moderator tonight, so uh, you get to see my beautiful face. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be guiding the conversation, but really tonight is about the artists here. All of them were invited because they were um, wonderful helpers. They offered their time and volunteered both through curation and installing. Um, this show we literally could not have gone up without them. This is the largest show we've had here. Um, it's our second annual Marn Members Exhibition. Last year we had 63 pieces, 51 artists represented, all members. This year we have 104. So we overmet what I was expecting. I was thinking, you know, 20 more artists, that would be a great place to meet. And we went up to 107 applications. A few of them, unfortunately, didn't quite meet the standards in terms of uh, the qualifications for the sizing. So they just didn't come through. I hope they come another year. However, um, 104 artists, 104 pieces, uh, it's an outstanding show. If you haven't had a moment to look at it after the talk tonight, please do. Every piece has its own stance, its own gravity to it, and um, ev everybody should get the, just the same amount of time and consideration. Um, besides that, I um, just wanted to let each artist describe to them, and, like, give their own introduction. I can introduce you, but I think you'll be able to introduce yourself a little bit better. And for, by chance also uh, say your pronouns, and uh, maybe describe the work that you put into the exhibition today. Uh, we can start with you, Marjorie, if you feel comfortable. Awesome. Um, my name is Marjorie Windrum. Um, my piece is an untitled piece, an untitled piece around the corner. Um, I call it uh, one of my cosmic series. It has kind of a celestial theme. Um, I. Uh, got my fine art degree from Mills College in Oakland, California, a long time ago. I also have an art education credential from UW-Madison and have taught art in uh, elementary, high school, and adults. Um, and I recently retired and am working in my studio full-time. Thank you. Oh, and I'll just say my pronouns and she, her. Uh, what are your pronouns? Um, Ms., I guess. Okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Abigail?
Thank you. <laughs> All right. Is the uh, sound doing okay over there? Okay. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah? Thank you. It, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Well, what you've just learned is how uh, diverse of an approach each person here is, and this is five of 104. Um, so this exhibition has so many different ways of working, not only in medium, but in concept, and maybe even where you feel like you are at your career. Uh, maybe you took a break, maybe some emerging artists, even students are in this exhibition. The, some people that have been producing for 30 plus years are also. So it's really great to see a lot of the work come together and kind of become an equal playing field at some points where you're not sure if the work you're looking at is from you know, a young person in their early 20s or someone who's um, been experienced and more established in their career. Um, I know that this exhibition was wanting to talk more about the behind the scenes and curation of the exhibition. I can speak to my favorite areas, but I was curious if you two or you five would be curious to share how you felt about where your work ended up and maybe your favorite parts of what it felt like to walk through a very, very eclectic exhibition in a way. Um, I'll let anybody share whoever's comfortable and ready. Yeah? 
Um. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> I think Marjorie and Abigail, you were here too, one of my first days of curation, and we put the groups of work together a lot of times in colors where we were at. Some of them ended up moving. I, I work more in conceptual work in my own practice, so I think I ended up being a little stubborn after our, our being together, and some works found a different place. Um, but it was really interesting to see your thought processes behind how you would curate a show. I'm curious how you feel now um, with it being a little bit different than maybe the curation was when you guys were here volunteering. Um, I, think, I think it looks great. I think that um, your final touches worked out very well. Um, I think that when Abigail and I left that first day, um, I'm not sure. It seemed, I, I feel like it's, it's more, it flows more evenly as far as color, even, you know, and theme. I can see that the, you know, the thematic choices that you made, but I just feel like um, it flows really well. I have to say that when I first got here that morning, and I looked at my painting, and I looked at all the other work, I felt like mine doesn't look good with anything in here. It just felt so weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, where is this one going to fit in? Because I didn't feel like it fit, which was interesting. But I, th I think it looks fine where it is. <laughs> Yeah, you two take a bit, took a big lead in this area that ended up happening, which was really beautiful. Yep, yep. So you were the, you two were the first day. Marjorie and Abigail helped the first day, where I had all the works out, sort of, <laughs> <laughs> and then Megan and Deborah came in, and you were actually the first day with Abigail and Marjorie as well. You were a busy beaver hanging the work. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Tom was a great installer. So if anybody needs a preparator or someone to follow <laughs> your, your ruling and your measuring, that was great. Um, I know you kept talking about how um, it felt really nice to be in a space doing something and contributing and being here. So um, I hope all of you felt that way. And I hope this space feels that for everybody that's around, that this can be a community place of building. Whether you have the time to volunteer or not, you know, a lot of us are very busy. But if you do, um, I hope that we feel like we can connect, um, whether it's being in here and grabbing me while I'm running around or whatever it is.
I'm curious. Um, this is what I look like, look at in curation. I think of curation as being actually an art form of its own. You're space building. You're guiding the viewer into seeing something. Um, so a lot of the times I was making sure, like you said, that two works were not fighting with each other. That was, or screaming was a term I kept saying that week of install. Is, is one screaming over the other? Or uh, are they singing? Is something being brought out out of your work or someone else's work that wouldn't have been seen if it was next to a different piece? Um, and so I'm curious now that you've been in this exhibition or maybe in other exhibitions that have curated how you look at curation yourself or look at the building of an exhibition, whether it's your solo show or being in a group exhibition or one that has a theme. If anybody has an, any insight on how they feel, they, they really appreciate certain curators working with them. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like it was actually, you know, what was fun with it is uh, receiving the submissions. All of the submissions were found online and then getting to actually see the work in person. I think a lot of the work was better in person, which usually is, but it was fun to actually see what the results was. And I think that was when my brain started clicking is like, that's not just a piece I saw on the screen, that's Tom's piece. And I got to see some people's work um, and a little aspect of their work I hadn't seen before. All of these pieces have not been shown at Marne before and they've all been made within the last couple of years. Uh, which also, without speaking too much about the pandemic, is amazing. Let's just talk about the fact that artists continued over the last couple of years through all the ups and downs, many exhibitions closing, um, being postponed. I think we're finally to the point where hopefully things will not be closing and postponing anymore. But the fact that these works have made it through that time, none of these are works that came before, and I'm just showing them now, um, I think is beautiful. Um, some of the work's themes are tied to that, some of them are not, um, which is great. You don't have to always think about it in your art practice. Um, you seemed, I keep looking at you, Marjorie, because I remember having a lot of moments with you where it felt like you had a really sensibility on curation. So I just want to hear a little bit about your thoughts of like when you step into an exhibition or maybe you're tasked with hanging your own work, how you approach it. Um, well, I'm very visual. And so I, rather than theme, I just want things to look well together. And I think that my overwhelming feeling helping with this was I didn't want any piece to feel like it was sidelined or lost or minimalized or, you know, it's, you want them all to feel like they are going to catch the viewer's eye as they move around through the space. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Abigail, you, your piece is the maybe the most non-traditional one, hanging from one of our ductwork um, in the space. Um, there is a little cove over here if you haven't had a chance to walk around. I'm kind of call it my social justice area. Um, I know it's hung in kind of this cove, and maybe it would have been one and or desired to be maybe more in the middle of a space. Um, but that's intentional. Do you want to talk about the Prince presentation of your work a little bit?
it's okay, yeah. <laughs> Different kind of microphone, um, Megan. When uh, and I've had your work now in this sh in this space two times now. I've been blessed to have that, and congratulations on the sale of your work too, by the way. Um, it was interesting because people pulled to it different ways. I'm now familiar with your themes, which are memory, um, and there were times where it was so easy to put it next to uh, a piece that kind of looked like landscape because it has that magnificent green and that. Um, the outline of the tree. But I knew every time it went there, it would pull your concept to landscape. So I was pretty stubborn on that. Um, but I'm curious how you've, you've navigated your work in other exhibitions, and if you've, you feel like sometimes you want to show a certain people that have more of that deep photography-based memory, or if you find yourself um, just basically where you find yourself pulled to when you're exhibiting, if there's certain shows or certain themes or certain ideas that you want to have represented when you have your work up in a space. <laughs> uh, you know, and so, um, Yeah, I feel like your, um, and I hope everybody has a chance to look at it, just kind of over there. You see that sculpture, it's kind of in the cove right there. It has that teal green kind of color, yeah. For those that are in the front, uh, hopefully you have a chance to see a little bit later, um, drifting back. But um, it's interesting to see that your work is very collage, but in a painterly way. Um, and, I, and let's see, there's three paintings uh, kind of artists here, Marjorie. Yours is very... Um, I was very expressive. Um, I went back and forth from thinking it was a sun to thinking it was an orb to thinking it eventually I think you described it as planetary or someone did to me and it kind of clicked for me. It was really transcendent in a way and I think you talked about magic realism in your s the themes that were with it. And then we have Deborah here and your work is very bright, kind of that toxic color that you're talking about Megan as well. Um, so everybody's work here actually has a really strong stance, so it's kind of funny that you all volunteered. Um, none of your works were the easiest ones to curate into the exhibition by any means. Um, and so I wanted to talk, I guess we're going down the line here, Deborah, about your work, your work being so bright, which is the chair piece over here. Um, it's bright orange. I feel like orange and that orangey red I've seen a couple of times in your pieces. Um, I found that it's sometimes so strong, like that screaming that I was talking about, it's so strong that it has to be either find its own location to shine and not um, pull too much away, or actually might get lost because it's so strong that your eyeballs actually want to go to a calmer space. How you've handled that? Mm-hmm. 
Yes, definitely. You have the two chairs, and you seem to s talk about something without talking about something, like you just said. <laughs> Very true. Very true. And Tom, you're the collage artist in the room tonight speaking. Um, your work ended up being in kind of that area where things are kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, there's a piece by uh, John um, who goes by the ox over there that's quite graphic. Uh, it's framed right now, but it's a spray painting piece with a little bit of collage. And um, I knew those two because they both have cars and stop signs and they, they kind of talked about the hustle bustle of the culture going together. But I felt like they needed to be pulled down a little bit without being too graphic with some of the abstract pieces that are next to you. One by Ruth Vonberg, uh, Vonderberg, and then the other one by, um, excuse me, I am forgetting her name right now, but it's that beautiful brown piece that's a drip painting. Now, you are back into your practice. Um, how do you feel going forward? Are you wanting to continue working in collage? Do you want to connect with more collage artists? Definitely, and unfortunately, one of the other volunteers that helped quite a bit um, throughout the process in patching and helping me paint a little bit was Reed Senkin, who has this um, wild piece here, uh, Volcano. It is actually has cat fur on the face. I don't recommend those who are allergic to get too close. Um, but it's it's pretty bizarre and crazy, but he, he was the one that took the biggest, biggest stab at the lighting, um, which is usually what I have my hands more deep into, so... Thank you to Reed, who just couldn't come today. Yeah. yeah, it really was a community project bringing this all together. Now, um, with that all in mind, and kind of seeing your work in a group exhibition that has a very various ways of approaching, I'm, I'm wondering what you think of future. I know uh, Deborah and I were just talking about an exhibition potentially here. We do have a request for proposals for exhibitions that just opened this week for those who are artists who would like to submit that is due on March 16th, a little bit of a shout out to apply to that. But without going too Marne related, uh, what would you like to do uh, with your work? Where would you like to see it exhibited? Is there a certain way or a certain type of artist you'd like to be shown with that maybe has been percolating that you'd like to speak about? Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, for us here in particular, this, this request for proposals for exhibitions that just went out does have a maximum budget of uh, 1500 So there is um, a budget for the exhibition coming up. Um, as we continue to grow and get more sponsors and money here, I hope to continue to pay artists for exhibiting. Um, but a little bit to be determined or future goals there for us. 
Great. Well, um, with that in mind, I was wondering just a few thoughts on like the pros and cons of being in a large group show. Is there something that you learned about your work or about work in general that we haven't spoke about? Is there a con? Did you feel like you're sometimes large group shows are too chaotic? It's hard to to view them. Um, just just curious about your thoughts on that. I feel like. It's hard for someone to see me as an artist by just looking at one work. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like the opportunity to have, you know, at least three mm -hmm. pieces. T because, and I feel that with a lot of these works, that it would be great to see more pieces by individual artists rather than just a single piece. Definitely. Is there, you said you had a few pieces that you wished were exhibited with that work. Do you want to describe what that three, three group Well, the like? piece that's here is actually part of a series. I've done 11 so far. Um, I'm working on a 12th one right now. Um, and um, I guess I would like to see like several of those because it, it just shows I don't know, m more imagination and more of the thematic quality of the work. Definitely. So um, in your work, you also talk a lot about um, guard your garden space and kind of responding to that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel when your work has three, potentially two, 12 of them, that that kind of brings it out? Um, yes. I mean, to me, the pieces are, they have this kind of, magical cosmic quality, but they also, when I look at them, they have a very strong um, nature garden kind of feel to them as well. Um, that, but in, and, and I think that I bring that to almost every piece that I do. It has a, um, and not necessarily a, um, a uh, landscaped garden, it could be a wild garden, kind of a feeling, but um, I think there's a very strong landscape theme to my work, even though it is abstract. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Anybody else have any percolating um, things that they would like to see their work curated with or in pairs, or maybe you envision um, five of the works that you have here, kind of like Marjorie said? Do your rug? Mm. 
You're okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I've found, oh yeah, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, of course. I, it, it really is fun to see. And this is just a sampling even in itself. I think we have upwards of 350, including those who are arts appreciators that are now a part of MARN. So there are even more. Um, I think Mal briefly spoke about the marketplace, uh, which is our front retail area. That has 41 artists, uh, some who are also in the exhibition. I think, um, Deborah, you're for sure in the marketplace. Marjorie, are you? Yep, you're in the current cycle. So um, it's just exciting to see how many, well, one. Let's look at this in terms of Chicago versus New York versus Milwaukee. I think Milwaukee is a hidden gem that's growing. Um, it's uh, slowly getting recognized, and it's really exciting to have a space like this that is so public facing. I'm having people come in by accident and look at art and maybe buy a work of art. Where does that happen often? Not often. Most spaces are just closed to the public for collectors to come in, or um, they are uh, strictly museums, which don't really do artistic sales in that way. Um, so it's been really exciting to be here and be a part of be Milwaukee being recognized in the the community and the public seeing the great work that is growing and changing here, and that Milwaukee is a thriving arts community in itself, in its own right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's been fun to see this exhibition, like you said, with all the different approaches. This was my maybe most complicated area I struggled with. It's the wild card area. There's a lot of works here. Um, there I kind of dispersed some more tame works within it. And unfortunately, we have a couple of speakers, but we'll move those after the talk tonight so you can look at it better. But I realized I couldn't throw all of the wild cards, the reeds, sankins in the world in one spot because they started being too much together. Um, so we did have to kind of bring them out. And what's interesting is I, one of my favorite areas, which I did not expect that I found, and it's really easy to see as a viewer right now, is these three right here, or these four even, and Todd Schuster's piece. This wall, um, there's a few works in there that I struggled to find a spot for, and all of a sudden they found a spot, and, and they're all very different. We have figures, we have mosaic, we have a very abstract work that so like sensitively handled. Then we have Pamela's great graphic abstractions next to Todd's, which is a um, piece that feels really familiar. It makes me feel like I know who that is. It's um, very carefully handled. A uh, shout out to Todd who's here tonight, um, who framed his piece this week. It's, it's lovely to see how those different pieces all of a sudden seem to find themselves in a level that I don't know without being paired like that would be pulled. Um, uh, just briefly, I am an artist as well, and one thing that I've found in exhibiting my work is that I do find relationships in my work when it's next to a piece that's not mine, that I wouldn't have found. My work gets pulled maybe to a, uh, a way of viewing that I maybe didn't add into what I was thinking about. You know, maybe I wasn't thinking that my work is about feminism, but I'm next to an artist that's making work about, that's feministic, but I'm making work about my own life and I, I identify as a woman, so therefore it kind of lends itself to that direction. Or perhaps I'm next to a more graphic performance artist and I do performance work as well, but I find mine to be softer and all of a sudden it's pulled in another direction. So it's just exciting, I think, to be a part of an exhibition where you don't really know, the curator might put your work in a spot where you kind of feel a little stubborn about it, but all of a sudden you're like, oh great, I, I had no idea, and now I'm gonna make some work that I didn't expect to make after this exhibition. Um, I do wanna give some time for Q&A, but if anybody has any final thoughts they would like to share about curation, their work, um, upcoming shows that they might wanna promote, I love a good little plug. All right, um, if anybody would like to share a question, I can walk around with the microphone and the panelists can answer that for you. A little quiet crowd. Well, um, without further ado then, I just wanna thank everybody once again for coming tonight. We are gonna do another panel next week on Thursday um, with five other exhibiting artists in the exhibition. It will be more theme related to the exhibition, so if you're curious about that, same time. And then the following week will be a closing reception. So thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. It's our first panel in a while. Um, it feels really exciting. It's great to see everyone's face. Thank you.